Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we are taking a look at the latest version of the stable release of the fly-by-wire simulations A32NX. This is a huge release, there are loads and loads of updates, far too much to cover in one video but what we're going to do today is look at a lot of those highlights to give you an idea, especially for those of you who've been sitting with the stable version but also a bit of a refresher for those of us who've, uh, who've been uh, following along with the development versions and experimental versions. So there's been a lot of things that have moved over from development into this latest stable release, which is great to see. Uh, a few things that are still only in the experimental, but uh, yeah, we're going to see uh, some great features here today. This has been an amazing effort by the fly-by-wire teams, as always. All of these features that have been added are just brilliant. They add so much to the simulation and also are just pushing this closer and closer to the, the level that we'd like to see it. So yeah, I can't wait to show you guys loads of things to cover today, as I said. We're going to start here at Heathrow and head over to Amsterdam for a relatively short flight today as we discuss some of these features. But first of all, let's talk about the setup of this version. So as I said, this is the stable release version 0.6 and it is slightly different now. It is in a different section. So let's take a look um, at choosing the aircraft correctly. An important change is that now the Fly-by-wire A32NX is in a separate area to the uh, Sobo A320neo. So when now you've updated to version 0.6, you'll see that it is actually a separate airplane. If I scroll along, here it is, Fly-by-wire simulations A320neo. The Sobo one is still here, but you'll notice that uh, if I go through to it, that my liveries and so on um, won't be there. They'll just be the ones that Sobo now provide. Interestingly, including the S7 livery, so that's quite nice to see them adding liveries. So we need to be careful now from now on to make sure we do actually select the uh, fly-by-wire A32NX which is all over here. Something to note is liveries do work so you'll get the fly-by-wire livery and now if you go to flightsim.to you need to make sure you choose the specific A32NX livery section that is different to the Asobo A320 livery section so that does need to be changed. Um, it seems to be quite a quick change but uh, yeah so a lot of liveries have already been converted and I believe there is a way to convert them yourself as well. So let's go with our Mansur Airlines 1985 uh, and we'll start at Heathrow and fly over to Amsterdam. Now we are on board, let's uh, have a look around. You'll notice that there's new textures. They've updated the textures in this uh, interior. They've also tweaked those since they first released them. So yeah, we're getting some really nice effects on the, the interior now. Um, they weren't bad before, but they were a little bit over blue, um, whereas now they seem to have balanced that a lot better. Um, and I know when they originally updated these textures, we had sort of quite a, a pronounced uh, 3D effect here, which has been softened, which is really nice. So yeah, just fantastic work. You'll notice if you uh, do scroll around the cockpit enough, you'll notice things like these uh, thrust levers have got really nice detailing. Little bits of wear and tear around the place, but not too many. This is a Neo aircraft after all, they wouldn't be that worn out. But you notice like where your feet go, there's some paint flaking off and uh, and so on around the, the footrests. Really, really nice. So it's, it's coming along <laughs> really well. I mean, the I didn't know I needed these new textures until they provided them and I tried them out a bit. You'll also notice as well things like the screens have uh, bits of dust and so on on them, which of course the real airplane gets quite quite easily. They are they are living, working, breathing machines, or at least in normal times they are. So yeah, quite expected to, to get a little bit grubby. Coffee cup has been added. You can click on it if you'd like to take a drink. And uh, yeah, it is possible to change the, uh, the logo on there. I think there's one for both of us. So lucky first officer gets a coffee today as well. So there we go. That is... Um, uh, the most immediately obvious change when you jump into the flight deck of your, your brand new version 0.6. They've also updated the electrical system, so uh, we won't run through the cold and dark setup. I do have a video out on that. Um, and likewise, I have a video on a lot of these features individually. Uh, we've talked about them all in the past over the last uh, few weeks, really. So um, yeah, there's plenty of videos. If you'd like more details, go to my channel and there'll be more details on almost all of the topics we're going to see today. But next up, um, let's take a look at the updated electrical system. So you can see now that the battery voltages are correct, 27.3, 27.8. We want them to be above 25 and a half when we power on the, uh, the batteries. Otherwise, they'll need a charging cycle. Um, so if we can, uh, again, you would also do a few other checks. Send your masters off, most selector norm, landing gear lever down, wiper selectors off, a few things like that, which they all are. And we're going to turn on these batteries. And let's turn on the audio so you can hear the changeover now. I'm going to turn up the audio and you can hear um, as I turn on the second battery and also the external power, you're going to hear a few clunks as the electrical relays, which are behind here, start clunking over. They're very noticeable in the real airplane. You'll also hear the air conditioning and the avionics cooling come to life as the fans start to spin and, and spool up behind here. Very 
very distinctive Airbus startup sounds. So let's have a listen. Those dings are the um, cabin system coming to life, which allows us to provide uh, warnings to the cabin and obviously seatbelt signs, things like that. And here comes the power. So there you have it, new sound effects added throughout, startup sounds and all sorts, but there's just a little taster of it uh, there with the electrical power up and also a demonstration that the electrical system is now functioning. And um, we'll get these screens brightened up for you so we can see what's going on. And we've got so, so much to talk about today, so much to cover. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really incredible. So let's get all these, all of these turned on. So um, now if I go to the electrical page on the ECAM system, elect we can see the external power is on 115 volts 400 hertz and it now correctly sends through and the batteries even discharge and charge up which is great to see and um, you can see four amps so that they're actually charging up a little bit as they work their way up towards their 28 volts um, so there we go that is um, a little taste of the electrics we can have a look at the APU now let's start up the APU you could of course do the uh, APU fire test and so on but uh, yeah, again, just showing you a few things. So now the APU page, which will show up automatically if, you have, uh, if you've left this alone, you can see it all spools up nicely. I believe they've added in uh, some nice cool down times on the APU as well, things like that, um, which is really great. APU is available then. Um, it says available down there, available up here. The generator is automatically gonna be available. So if we go back to our electric page, there it is. You can see the APU gen not taking any load because the external power has the, uh, has provide it is providing our power it will automatically unless i turn it off and now the apu generator is supplying with these green lights so great as i say electrical system come a long way really great to have all that in there now so let's have a look at our mcdu at the next big change so this is how it loaded up from cold and dark and uh, what i can do is i can let me just do that. There we go. Okay, so what I can do here is go to FMGC and we run it as normal. But if I go back to MCDU menu and now go to options and AOC, source ATIS, I can select VATSIM. I can do source METAR and I've got Meteor Blue, Microsoft Flight Simulator. The reason I do that is so that it downloads the uh, the weather from the actual simulator. So it should be the same <laughs> as what it loads in if I use live weather. We are unusually using live weather today. And you can see how sunny it is in London. Unbelievable. So there we go. Um, the ATIS is the uh, terminal information. So that is what the airport will tell you um, the runway in use on and things like that and taxiway closures, the actual weather for that half hour period. So this is useful, obviously, and you need to be connected to VATSIM and the VATSIM area you're in needs to have the ATIS working for that airport you're, you're using. Um, more more commonly used by me, um, the ATIS would be used if I'm using VATSIM, but otherwise if you go to Meteor Blue, Microsoft Flight Simulator on here, but there are other options as well. Um, I don't need to be connected to anything, it will just download the METAR and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, the TAF is the forecast and you've got a few options in here, not, not always available. And then in SimBrief you need to put in your um, username, pilot ID, uh, so that you can um, download your uh, route which I'll show you now so if you've done that in SimReef and you've already set up a route again not not a required feature this at all you can still follow my previous tutorials to load in the route manually which is what a lot of airlines do they don't all download it through ACARS if I go into the AOC menu and I can go to init then I do init data request now it will load that in from SimReef and there you go Heathrow to Amsterdam uh, which is the route I put in and it just downloads that straight away dead easy um, and there you go, not too important some of these pages, but that's now a feature in the stable build, which is fantastic. I can also then go back and go to weather request and it already has my airports. Uh, actually, those are the wrong airports and I'll show you why. If I now go to the init page, um, ignore that. That's uh, something I put in earlier just to prove this works. Do init request and it will load it in from my Simbri flight plan instead of using the Microsoft Flight Simulator one. So there it is, it's all up linked and inserted. And then if we go to flight plan, there's the route. Uh, I happen to know I'm taking off from runway 27 right today. Uh, and we're gonna do the Brickman's Park departure. And insert. So there we go. So that's loaded up our init A page for us, flight plan. Um, then we've got secondary, doesn't work yet. Radnav, you can now tune a bit more correctly. We'll show that in a second. Um, secondary and let's go to init B and 
as ever you can just click to load these things in and in terms of fuel let me just check we have enough fuel yep definitely with 9.4 tons so i can put it in 9.4 but actually before we do that let's talk about some more features that have been added in so as you can see it's now possible to download your sim reef flight plan um, simply by making sure your id is in the options page in the uh, aoc uh, and then you've put it into sim brief you likewise have fmgc you can change your units default units things like that um, so yeah pretty nice pretty nice indeed if we go to the uh, atsu aoc this is where we can um, download that weather so if i send for that that will arrive in our received messages um, so we'll leave that for a second and again ATIS would also be available if we were connected to that sim in here we can also do performance weight and balance so you can download it uh, so that's what we actually needed 5.1 so I could choose to load that and download it but we'll go with a little extra fuel today and I'm going to show you another way to load fuel likewise payload uh, we can do the request send and then we can load it on as it is there so that's all great really dead easy you can do so much setup just through the MCDU Let's go back to our received messages then. Here's our METAR and it has arrived. And now we come onto a huge feature that we were all very excited about a little while ago now, but we can select print. So that's downloaded. Print, just like the real airplane. It comes up down here. A bit of an art in real life to ripping this off perfectly. But if we click on it, it collects the paper and it stores it down here. And what's really handy is with that default view, you can actually see see the weather in here. So when you're loading in for like your approach, you can just copy it over, um, which is what we would do in the real airplane. Literally, you would have it printed out and put it here. So you could just copy it over in there, which is dead easy. So really, really nice, really handy having that. That, that printer is a really useful feature. There's no doubt about it. Um, great. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So the last thing we wanted to do, we were on the init B page and we're going to put some fuel in. Um, so uh, let's go to the fuel and let's say we we're going to for some reason take extra fuel so of course here's the efb this is a huge addition to this this add-on now so you click on it to make it come to life it comes up with flypad of course um, and here it is so what can we do in here well it shows you your map it shows you weather you can see there's no rain around the uk for once not sure why it's flickering i haven't seen that before um, i've got my route heathrow to amsterdam in simbrief so if i click from simbrief it will load it into here um, but to do that actually i've got to go to company first and type it in here so i'm just going to uh, do that okay now we go back to dashboard from Simbrief and there it is Heathrow to Amsterdam brilliant and it shows us the weather and so on so that's actually got the same same information available in dispatch uh, we can see the overview of the airplane here's our OFP which is now scrollable which is brilliant so this again is coming from Simbrief so you can get that information straight under here I know charts are in the works for the future which is going to be fantastic when we can have charts as well uh, and next tab fuel so now we can load on fuel so let's say we wanted to put on i don't know something silly like 13 tons of fuel um, i don't need to fiddle with these individual sliders it, it does it all automatically i just choose the fuel i want so i can slide this one up and it automatically fills it up in the correct order so you'll notice that let's say we had three tons of fuel it'll have full outer tanks which are these little outer tanks here then it will fill up the inner tanks next and then the center tank will be empty and if we add more and more fuel, eventually you can see it decides to add fuel to the center tank as well, which is correct. The center tank is the last tank that would be filled. So let's go for let's go well, let's go for 14 tons, something absolutely ridiculous. There we go. And then you can click play. Uh, and I've got it set to instant. You can also do fast and real, and it would take a bit of time to load on the fuel. But just to prove it, if we look over here, there we go. 14 tons of fuel has been loaded. So I'm just going to type in my 14 tons into there. That now works. Uh, alternate fuel is going to be let's take uh, uh let's make it 1.4 tons for our alternate excellent and now finally we can go to perf um, and set up the last bit so let's do a flap one takeoff from heathrow we'll use toga thrust why not and then i can select each of these speeds and they work so i'm not sure when that was last i think that's been working for a few versions now but there you go <laughs> um, i put the transition altitude to 6000 which is correct for london good so there you go. Uh, we now have a fuel system working in here. Payload is inoperative at the moment. Other tabs, flight doesn't work. Performance is a top of a descent calculator. We'll talk about it a bit later. Company we've done, ground. So here we go. This is all now new. So you can control your ground services. So let's call the tug and then you'll see the tug arrive. Uh, let's get the door and the passengers coming up. You can also request the fuel truck, which would then call the fuel truck and bring up that little fuel page, but you don't really need that now. 
uh, same for baggage. Um, external power you can click but it doesn't make a difference all it does is it would bring up the um, this little unit would drive up and a, a little cable would animate but we still have our ground power anyway there we go I've discovered that if you call the tug it won't let you have these uh, stairs so by getting rid of the tug which is now going or oh, should be driving away there it goes uh, the stairs will arrive and the passenger door will open and we can hopefully do the same for the after door there we go door opens not sure where the catering truck is today <laughs> running a bit late oh no there it is so look at that so all your ground handling can now be run nice and simply through the uh the efb and there we have it aircraft being uh serviced on the ground as you would expect i'm a big fan of ground handling in simulators i think they they really must turn it into as i said before a little diorama which makes it really nice so i i do enjoy having these features added in um, so yeah, great to see stairs, catering, and uh, yeah, let's get those disconnected. We'll get the tug connected and we'll get ourselves uh, underway. That's my only wish for these, is that they do disconnect on their own quite quickly. I'd like them to stay a little bit longer. Um, sadly, it does not take only about three minutes to load passengers, but, uh, but yeah, very good. So here comes the tug. And now you'll notice we can push back from down this panel as well. So looking forward to giving that a go. Just need to wait for my IRSs to align um, because I, <laughs> I was too busy chatting uh, to you guys and we didn't get that done. So that is going to take a couple more minutes. As you can see, it does correctly tell you IR in align six minutes. Over seven minutes, it just says greater than, um, it doesn't give you the exact time. But as you get into these, the last few minutes, it's uh, pretty, um, pretty accurate. QNH is set, quite high pressure today, which is part of the reason we have this nice weather. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so uh, we are all aligned now. It is time for our pushback. We've got GPS primary down here. So let's get our beacon on. And our transponder can go to auto. And we've already got our tug. So we can press back. But first, I'm going to release the parking brake. Now, in the rear airplane, there'll be a lot of communication between you and the ground crew. Now I can just push back and away we go. Start the clock and that will start running for our sort of uh, timer for how long we've been going. Just in case uh, our onboard systems <laughs> like the ACARs don't record it properly. And away we go. So while we push back, um, let's have a look at a quick trick for teaching yourself how to push back. So if you just click on these arrows, it just turns straight away as you can see so it's a little bit difficult to do that from the flight deck so what you can do and I'll show you now is if I uh, press the right alt button click on the plus and then it brings up this screen as an overlay so using right alt and then click on the screen and now I get the exterior view a lot of viewers pointed this tip out to me um, but it always takes me a few tries no not that way that way <laughs> I want to face uh, face north uh, to get it going but there we go so that is a, a handy way so now you no longer need an add-on now i i do like the um the add-ons as well but this is this is really handy for getting your pushback sorted there are some new startup sound effects so we'll push back and then we'll have a listen to those this could be one of my best ever pushbacks oh no too early not bad <laughs> right i'll press stop there it should grinds to a halt gently and then we can jump back in the flight deck let's get rid of that window and very importantly let's set that parking brake and we can get rid of the tug okay so let's start up the engines i'm going to turn on the audio again for you guys and we can have a listen so first of all starting engine two most selector to ignition start we've got the pressure I'll start the timer and let's jump into one of the many provided cockpit views now. So here's another feature. If you go to showcase, fix camera. We have all these extra views which are just fantastic. There we go. And I'll let you listen. I think these startup sounds are fantastic. Probably some of the best A320 sounds out there in any simulator. Really, really brilliant. 
Um, so fantastic work to the, the fly-by-wire team on those. So now let's listen on the outside. We'll start up engine number one. So we've got our pressure. That engine two is up and uh, running. So master switch on. Start the timer. And let's go into our drone view. Right, let's taxi out to the runway and go and take a look at uh, some of the other features that we get in this uh, mod now in flight. Okay, then here we are on the runway. Let's uh, take off. So if you use the experimental version, you'll see the different um, modes in that, but uh, and a different fly-by-wire system. But that's not in this version yet. So there we go. Mantoga SRS runway. Your thrust is armed and blue. Our clock is running. And let's get ourselves into the air. Takeoff inhibit now you can see in that center screen which is something I've done a video on quite recently if you're interested to know what that is talking about. As we pass through 80 to 100 knots we'll bring that side stick to a neutral. V1 rotate up we go. Positive climb here coming up here we are departing then on our Brookman's Park departure and let's have a look at some of the improvements to the tuning of radio nav aids not something we've talked about much so far as you can see we're going to head to the Charlie Hotel Tango which is an NDB 277 if I go down to RADNAV277 and type it into here, it will appear and it identifies CHT, it knows that, um, and it's in front of us. Now, to display it, I can go to ADF and the needle here, that green needle is pointing straight at the CHT. So if I track directly to where this needle is pointing, I'll end up at the CHT NDB whilst we head towards it. I do have a video on tracking um, if you need help tracking. Uh, NDBs and VORs so uh, yeah do please check that out on the channel but um, it is great to see that this is now available on the nav page previously it only worked on these pages like the VOR page um, so to have it on that page is exactly how the airplane is and much more useful uh, I also need the Britman's Park VOR 117.5 the real airplane would actually tune this automatically um, it does populate these with auto tune frequencies all the time there's Britman's Park if I change this to VOR now it points towards the Britman's Park VOR and we can see that by zooming out and there it is and you can see that white arrow would take us straight to Britman's Park VOR as we're flying towards it. So a nice uh, improvement to the navigational systems in the, the mod as well there. Just want to take you through these camera views again. These are really nice, really, really great additions actually, especially useful for people like me trying to make videos and streams with it. Um, if I go to, just to show you how to get to them, a lot of people ask me how to get to my wing views. Um, I go to Showcase, Fixed Camera, you can just click on any of them, one. And now if I press the A key by default, it will cycle through them. So these are all the ones that come with the uh, uh, default Microsoft Flight Simulator HV20. Pretty used to those. Not sure why that tail view was much good, but so there we go. Not sure why this is much good either. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, and you had our original wing views. But it gets more exciting as we get the full panoramic wing view that we're used to in our flight simulators. And to me, that just looks absolutely brilliant just a gorgeous gorgeous view um, they've done a great job and you can see your, your livery this livery by AC455 and then we get the more traditional pure wing view um, just yeah brilliant really nice detail for them to have added in so there you go so here we are in the cruise now let's have a look at the descent calculator now I have done a video on how to work out your descent and um, this can be a little bit more confusing it depends what you're used to 
We can simply put in current altitude by pressing sync and it puts it in. Target altitude, well I'm landing in Amsterdam, so zero. And if I want to descend at three degrees, which is a pretty good starting point, I need 78 miles. Now by my math, I would do 25, because I take off the thousand, so 25,000. So I just do 25 times three, which gets me 75. So about the same, may need a little bit extra to slow down depending how fast you're flying. So that is uh, that is quite a nice feature of it to, to have uh, built in here. Um, just for a quick uh, gross check of what, what you're doing. The last addition I want to talk about today then is the ability to do a flap 3 landing. Now I haven't talked about flap 3 landings in a while on this channel so let's let's uh, let's do that now. Um, pretty straightforward it is often considered the standard landing flap in a 320 but despite that not used very often uh, by pilots as, as by default. Some pilots like it I personally prefer it in the 319 and the 321. Uh, in the 320 you'll see what I mean but we'll have a go so we'll do a low auto break um, because if you use medium auto break we're gonna land with less flap out will be a bit faster but more importantly our nose will be a bit higher um, so that is not great to have medium auto break with because when those brakes kick in if you haven't got the nose wheel down you'll find that the nose comes crashing down and you could eventually damage the nose gear if you if, you, if it was rough enough so let's go for low auto break the next thing I need to do is go into my performance field. So I set up all the weather. As we saw earlier, the magic is I can take it from here. So I've got ILS18 right, and I can see Q and H at EHAM 1028. Temperature there is 10. The wind is 030 at 10. So actually, that's a, a pretty strong tailwind to land on the 18 right. Although 10 knots we could do, it is possible. Uh, transition altitude it should be transition level uh, it's pretty low in Amsterdam so I'm, I'm going to put it in 5000 I think it could even be lower than that and crucially here landing config select config 3 so it swaps it over and you'll see your V approach changes and your VLS changes VLS is lowest selectable speed the V app is what it will try and fly on final approach so at config 4 to 131 config 3 a bit less flap it goes a bit faster 142 so that should be alright actually let's, uh, let's see what happens with that there is one more thing we need to do though we need to go up onto the overhead panel. We need to go to GPWS landing flap three on. This is to tell the GPWS system that we are going, we are expecting to land with that flap. Um, oh, curious. I'm not sure why we've got a pack fault light on. Down there. there we go. Um, and it comes up here, GPWS flap three. So if we don't do that, the airplane will get confused and think we're at the wrong flaps for landing and it will shout at us too low flaps on final approach, which would be very bad because it will think that we're going to do flat full landing unless we tell it we're doing a flat three landing so there we go flat three is now selected so when you're doing a flat three landing you need to go into performance and select config three in here you need to go onto the overhead panel and select landing flat three for the actual landing what's different we're going to have a slightly higher nose attitude will be a bit faster less of a flare will be required but that's about it i will do a video on that in the future it's a whole other topic really so gear down flaps to two and then the difference for this one is all we have to do is go to flap three by the time we want to uh, touch down so gears down arm the ground spoilers get the last of those lights on flaps to three ding down the cabin and here we are final approach and as you'll see nose is already at two and a half degrees and as the speed comes back to our 140 i'd expect it to go a little bit higher it could be up to almost five degrees pitch on a flap three landing quite common as i said doing a flap three with a, a 10 knot tailwind is probably not the normal way to do it although this is a huge long runway for a 320 but there we go and there's that nose coming up towards five degrees pitch so yeah higher nose attitude means a bit less of a flare we're coming in a bit faster You'll notice, by the way, I actually reduced the fuel amount because we were <laughs> well over maximum landing weight. Uh, so, yeah, so I've taken the fuel down. But there's our approach now. Above. Looking pretty reasonable. And, yeah, so the fly by wire team has done a great job. They fixed the pitch attitude in the last stable update, and now yeah, they've well. sorted it out as well for flat three landings. And as you can see on the ECAM memo, landing flat flaps config three. It's written on there. Get the reminder over here. Landing inhibitors is up. I have a video on that. All the pilot coming off then. And let's just take you through to a landing. Not sure where that flight director is going there. I don't want to pitch up like that. A <laughs> little bit uh, oversensitive still. So just holding that five degrees of pitch. Mainly watching that rate of descent to keep it at about the uh, 800 feet per minute mark or whatever it was at. Two white street reds out the window. Don't want to get too distracted by the glides up at this point. 200. 
airplane was trimmed out nicely before about yeah four to five degrees pitch so a bit less of a flare remember 10 degrees is our pitch limit for landing even flat three into the flare idle its thrust levers and just hold it there bit of a float and touch down plenty of runway get those reverses out idle reverse low water brake But as you can see, no big deal to a flat three landing. There are some differences with them and the way the airplane handles, which we'll talk about in, uh, in another video. But there we go. So that is another great feature of the fly-by-wire uh, mod. And here we are on the ground in Amsterdam after our flap 3 landing. I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's all for today. I'm sure there are, I know in fact, there are loads and loads of features hidden in the background and other little details that we haven't had the chance to see today. There's just too many. Um, but please do check out my other videos that have followed the progress of the development and custom uh, or experimental versions of the mod. And hopefully they'll give you a bit more of a clue and some more in-depth detail on some of these features. But hopefully this video today gave you a bit of an overview, a bit of a refresher of some of the things that we've seen. And like I say, this is now the stable version 0.6 build, which is what uh, I've used for this video. So absolutely brilliant. Amazing work by the Fly-By-Wire team. Can't wait to see what's going to come out next. As ever, uh, plenty more guides, tutorials and live streams coming on the channel soon. So do please subscribe if you've enjoyed it and you'd like to see more of this. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you again in another video or live stream soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.